Good morning. My name is Cade Close and I'm with Fishbowl. And the purpose of the demonstration today is to give a more generic overview of what this solution can do for any number of, of companies for perhaps those that didn't get a chance to schedule uh, a custom demonstration. This is an opportunity to, to get a, a look at Fishbowl. I want to start by identifying where Fishbowl is a good fit and the kinds of companies that purchase Fishbowl. I would say its strongest feature set is for those that are doing wholesale distribution and manufacturing. However, because we have such strong inventory features, we have a number of service companies. Those are doing more HVAC or construction that use our software for job costing. We have those that do retail. Uh, we have a large group of customers that do fulfillment or warehousing services. And then some that just use Fishbowl for asset tracking. Just need to know what we have and, and use it in, in a variety of standalone type situations, whether that's a hospital or a medical clinic uh, or just a garage needs to track what they have. Fishbowl has the ability to integrate with a number of accounting systems. So we serve mostly as an operation system and then use those systems for accounting. For example, we integrate with QuickBooks, Pro, Premier, and Enterprise. We, inter we integrate with QuickBooks Online and we also integrate with Xero. In all of these situations, we are using these accounting softwares to just be the general ledger, to track accounts payable, accounts receivable, the financial statements, uh, to be able to pay bills. And that's really it. The purpose of Fishbowl is to come in on the front end and do more of the day-to-day -day operations. And so with that, I'm going to give an overview of some of the features. What you're looking at here is we have different groups here on the left. Within the different groups, we have modules. So I do have a part module. This is where we would identify all of the different SKUs that we have. Um, now, if I'm a manufacturing company, that would include everything from, let's say, a finished good. So if I were in the business of manufacturing bicycles, um, I would have that as a part number. Uh, I would have its components as a part number. So if I have like a bike frame, and then I may actually have, you know, quite raw materials that perhaps I'm using for purposes of fabrication uh, or, or creating items. Now these can be tangible items, physical items like this. They could be all, all number of units to measure. So if we're dealing with uh, liquids or um, textiles or paints or you know, any number of items, we'll have uh, various units to measure that we can come and create these items in. The purpose of Fishbowl, you'll see over here on the left, we have you know a number of groups. We have a sales group where we'll be doing sales, picking, packing, shipping. There's purchasing and receiving type features. There's manufacturing where we'll have bills of materials or recipes. Um, and the whole goal is that when I'm looking at any one particular item, so I'll just take my raw good here, my bike frame, I have a lot of information on that particular item. Specifically, if I go into inventory, I would identify this as where the name Fishbowl comes from. This is your primary window that is letting us know what we have on hand, what we own. I have 186 bike frames. And then I can see how many are on order. So I can easily drill down and see uh, how, you know, what purchase orders we have and when they're scheduled to come in. This is because Fishbowl is doing those purchase orders and that receiving process. Allocation is the demand on any item. So perhaps there's demand on this part because somebody's ordered it and I need to ship it out. Perhaps there's demand on the item because I need to uh, use it in production, in which case it would be allocated to a work order. Down here is our available. So whatever's on hand minus whatever we have allocated or whatever's not available will be what is left over. So this is the key number for salespeople and, and those are in purchasing to keep an eye on. Fishbowl is what we would call an MRP system for materials requirement. And so there are a number of features focused on making sure that we have enough inventory to do um, our daily activities. You'll note here that I have reorder points and order up to levels that can be set up. That can be done manually or we have features in the software designed to help set up these min and max levels based on usage over your historicals. Uh, based on forecasting percentages, based on lead times to bring items in. Now we have functions in the software to give you a background on that data. Matter of fact, there's an entire forecasting module 
that's designed to give the background of what data it's using historically and why we're setting up the min and max levels the way we are. This is a, a visual data type module, so it can also be used to forecast sales and costs and some other things. In looking back here, when I'm looking at inventory control, I can see here what's on hand. I can move to an inventory module, and this module will tell me then where all of my items are sitting. So I have uh, a number of things to highlight here. On the left, there's what we call the location group and then a bin location. So in Fishbowl, you're going to have the opportunity to set up as many location groups as needed. This would be more like a physical warehouse. So if I have multiple warehouses or a fleet of trucks. The location module drills down a little further. So that's going to be more of my opportunity to see bin locations. Mine are fairly generic. I have a stock location here. I can see what's sitting in there. Uh, but users can get down to aisle, section, shelf, position on the shelf and can be very detailed about their warehouse and can even give their warehouse an order for picking to where they can go specifically uh, in, in the right order in the most efficient way through the warehouse. There are unlimited locations that you can have and when you look at this as an information system, there are of course going to be a number of reports that come with the system. Just note that most all of them are going to come with that ability to filter by location, whether it's aging report, a cycle count, a valuation type report, what's on hand. All of them have the ability to filter by what warehouse or what bin location. Okay. I want to point out something very important in our software that oftentimes uh, is the reason why companies will start to look or start to shop for new software, and it has to do with compliance for any number of industries, and that is the ability to track or trace items. And um, I will start with something uh, simple like a bike. Um, in this case, my bicycle needed to be tracked by serial number. So perhaps I run into this in a firearm industry or uh, a medical device industry uh, or, you know, in, in a, or maybe the auto industry where, or electronics where I have to track each unique item by a serial number. Um, and so when I come into inventory, not only is it going to show me, yes, you have 15 items here, but it's going to identify the specific serial number of each one. And then I could see its history and what went into it and what components. Um, there is, if we're talking about a, uh, anywhere in the food industry or again medical, uh, pharmaceutical, there is a need for traceability for recalls. And so I could take a product and I could track by let's say a lot number or an expiration date or even both or multiple. I have custom tracking fields if I need to track by maybe a manufacturer's lot number and my own lot number. Uh, things like that. So when I come into inventory, there's going to, again, I may have a lot of items that are in the same location, but they may have a different lot number, they may have a different expiration date, and we have reports that would help with uh, a lot number history for recalls as well as reverse. So whether I'm starting with, let's say, flour, and I need to know every cookie or cake or brownie that went into and who purchased any of those, or if I need to start on the other end where we have a problem identified by a customer and I need to go backwards and find out all ingredients that may have been affected. So that is the traceability portion of Fishbowl. Um, we've, we've discussed purchasing briefly. A lot of purchasing tools in the software, whether it's a reorder report, whether it's something like a monitoring module that would be alerting us when we're getting low on certain items. Uh, but purchasing is done here. Matter of fact, we have an auto purchase order feature that could recommend purchase orders to you when you're getting low. Um, but as far as demonstration purposes, I don't know that there's anything super unique other than, you know, this is now where the purchasing happens. There are pricing rules that you can implement. Uh, documents from Fishbowl, which are customizable, would be emailed out of the software, either automatically or uh, upon you telling it that you'd like to, you know, having a request each time whether you'd like to email it or not. There is a receiving module in Fishbowl. This is where we can identify what location things go into and if we have to accept or reject and what orders may be waiting for items as they come in. There is both a receiving function in Fishbowl and a reconciliation feature for those clients that may need 
um, to do landed costs or add additional freight duty taxes to the cost of goods sold of their items. Fishbowl, for by the way, when it comes to costing methods, does offer FIFO, LIFO, a standard costing method, and a weighted average. On the sales side, just briefly, you know, we are a point of sale system, so this is where now orders will come uh, when I need to identify for customers. Um, I have the ability to see the history of any customer, so if I wanted to come in and say, great, what have they purchased from me, I have that function right there. I should probably point out that we have a user interface as well for point of sale specifically, so if I just had wanted to come in and uh, scan items and hit, hit checkout, we have uh, a sales point module. Um, either would work, but this is a little bit more geared for a retail type space. Okay. Um, so again, in our fishbowl sales order module, a number of different ways to add items to a product, to categorize, uh, to be able to, um, you know, show pictures, whatever might be helpful for a sales team. So I'm going to add a couple of items. We have different pricing rules in case there are multiple levels of pricing. Uh, we have the ability to take payment right in Fishbowl and have that post over to an accounting system if needed. The major flow in our software though is sales to picking to shipping. Uh, so that's one of the, now if I'm a service company, it's more here's the job. Picking is more of a staging step. In shipping, it means delivery or, you know, it's, it's out or it's been will called or picked up. So again, uh, this can be used a number of different ways. I have companies that just need to essentially bring inventory in, expense inventory out. A lot of that could be done either through a sales order module or through the inventory module. I'm going to show the picking module, though. This is kind of the what's the main status of all of my orders. Um, there's documents that can come in and supplement. Um, whether it's pick ticket, order number, things like that. Um, I can move to, notice that there's different statuses, whether I have all the items for the order or not. Shipping module, we have integrations to UPS, FedEx, USPS. We have um, various plugins to other shipping software, such as ShipStation and ShipRush, ShipWorks, some of those. Um, essentially, I have the ability in Fishbowl to pull in tracking information uh, from like a FedEx and be able to email that to the client. Um, you know, when they want to have things like a packing list, um, it would have their tracking information. This is also information that we could push up to various channels if needed. So a little bit on the sales side there. Again, if I'm using this in a more traditional manner with an accounting system, Fishbowl is going to show whenever there are items to post. This is something that you can schedule or that I can click a button and have it go over. Okay, so as far as a generic overview, I also want to touch on just some of the other products that work with Fishbowl um, and, and perhaps some of the other add-on products that, that we have. First of all, it should be mentioned that Fishbowl is a labeling and barcode system. So if I need to print labels or barcodes, I can certainly do that. Um, we can customize labels. We can have labels for all of your locations. The primary product that we sell with this is called Fishbowl Go. So this is a, an Android uh, app that we have that goes on any number of types of wireless scanners. This is so that I can pick, pack, ship, receive, move inventory, do cycle counting. I do deliveries all from a scanner. It's for accuracy. It is to help uh, occasionally with speed as well, but it's mostly to reduce errors in the warehouse. Um, Hardware-wise, we often have those that want more of a point-of-sale setup as well. Uh, so if I need to be able to do more point-of-sale type hardware, um, we have that available. Cash drawers, barcode scanners, uh, receipt printers, those things that you might need in order to do point-of-sale. We have a, a whole collection of what we call plugins for Fishbowl, and a lot of this is for your e-commerce uh, channels. Um, you'll notice that I have some of them here, although Avalar is one that's more for tax purposes, um, but we have Amazon integrations and plugins to a number of, of websites, whether it's going to be um, Magento or Volusion, 
um, or 3D cart or a number of those. Uh, these are all different kinds of plugins that help when we're doing e-commerce. We also work with a number of EDI companies for bringing orders in. Again, the purpose being I want the, you know, all of my items to come into Fishbowl so I have a central place to be able to track inventory. I might also mention for those that are doing uh, 3PL uh, type services that we have a customer portal app uh, that we sell so that customers can get an idea of what, what you have in inventory. So again, um, in conclusion, uh, Fishbowl is, you know, I think its primary selling point is its ease of use. This is a very robust software. It runs on a, a SQL database, Firebird SQL database. Uh, we've had uh, the ability to continue to add features to it for a number of years. We've worked with QuickBooks since 2001. Um, so I appreciate the time. If you have any questions, you know, obviously uh, contact Fishbowl would be happy to give a more customized demonstration. Appreciate your time. Have a great day.